Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and Not Situation Report. So this is the summary for the day of 792 for the 25th of April. And uh, if you want access to this map, uh, link is in the description. Uh, it will be on uh, Defense Politics Asia's website. You, defensepoliticsasia.com slash Ukraine. Uh, the map is there. And um, so we're going to start off with the Kherson front. So we're going to go uh, clockwise direction, uh, sorry, anti-clockwise direction with Kherson, Kherson front and then uh, Zaporizhia front, Donetsk front, NDFK front, New York front, Bakhmut front, Sivas, Kremina, Sviatovy, and then um, Kremina, Kharkiv. Yeah, so anyway, we're going to start off with Kherson front. Uh, so you don't like uh, whatever front you can skip, you know, don't, but don't be frontis. Uh, so frontis. Ah, yeah. uh, anyway, uh, Krinky continues to you know, have fighting being reported over this area here with Russian forces still reportedly attacking Ukrainian forces holding up at Krinky. So that's all for this area. Nothing much to talk about. Um, and uh, there is the geolocation location of Russian artillery shelling over at Kizomisk. Uh, so that's about it. That's not something very significant. Uh, over at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant region, we have shelling reported at Mik uh, Mihailivka, uh, Kapulivka, as well as Nikopol. So we continue to have this kind of shelling being reported in this area here. It you know, always makes me suspect that there is something being brewed uh, by the Ukrainians over on this area here. But anyway, that's all for this area. Over at the Zaporizhia front. So this is Zaporizhia and uh, this is Zaporizhia front. At the Zaporizhia front, we have some fighting being reported. Uh, over at Shibaki, sorry, Mali Shibaki. So this is Mali Shibaki. There's some fighting being reported here. Joe location or FPV drone attacking Ukrainian forces at Petikaki. Russian forces attacking at Robotine. So this is the usual. But none of it is really offensive. Like, you know, none of it is really... a uh, an assault it's more like they are they're just doing fire attack attacking ukrainian forces holding up in position uh after the robotine there is also fighting being reported near verbove with russian forces continue to be pushing in this area here and uh so that's about it uh for this area um there is some shelling being reported at way according to the russian defense ministry but that's about it that we know uh, we move on to over at the Donetsk front. So this is the Donetsk front. At the Donetsk front, uh, we have fighting reporter uh, reported at uh, Uruzaine, Star, uh, sorry, Staromayoske, Uruzaine, uh, Voleda, Vodian, no, uh, Novo Mihailivka, Boyeda, and Krasnohorivka. So this is the strategic situation we are viewing. Uh, most basically all Russian attacking Ukrainians are on the defensive. So uh, over at Staro uh, Uruzaine and Staro Mayoski, uh, Russian forces has pushed further uh, in the south a little bit more. So this area is pretty heavily defended. So you know Russian forces are making small uh, slow pushes. Whereas they are also making this push at Staro Mayoski. That uh, for those that do not know, there is. Uh, there is a crossing across the river of the Mokriali River where the Ukrainian forces can uh, swap, swap uh, villages. Uh, you know, maybe the cafe here is nicer. Then uh, maybe they want to eat some spaghetti around here. So, so but either way, you know, uh, they can actually just cross uh, across each other. So this, this is a twin village. They need to be captured together. Uh, like you need to hold both of them. And then you're going to have a strategic advantage in terms of uh, troop, troop movements. Uh, of course, the Russians have already have a Zavini, a Bazankia, a Bazania. So they also can also just you know, go out and eat lasagna. So that's all for this area here. We move into the south of Precious Divka. There is a dual location of FPV drone strike uh, being uh, caught in video. Uh, over at Voleda, there is a missile attack on uh, Ukrainian positions within Voleda. Uh, Russian support forces are allegedly attacking Voleda uh, over here as per Rush, uh, reported by the Russian Defense Ministry. It could be just fire attack. It could, these two things could actually be the same thing. Uh, there is fighting reported in the direction of Vodian uh, according to the Ukrainian Ukrainian Defense Ministry. We do not know uh, where the attack come from. Uh, I'm going to assume it's coming from the east right now. Previously, we assume it's coming from Mikhilsky, but 
by one of the day, there was also a report about fighting near Mikhail's cave, which actually invalidates Mikhail's cave as the as the direction. So the direction is slightly coming from the south of Novo Mihailovka towards uh, Vodian. So over at Novo Mihailovka itself, we have fighting being reported in the area of Novo Mihailovka. Ukrainian Defense Ministry and Deep State UA both mentioned Novo Mihailovka. This comes after Russian forces already captured Novo Mihailovka on the 22nd, around four days ago. So Russian forces are still in this. Uh, still captured this area here uh, this looks like shit uh yeah very healthy shit and then uh probably they are pushing pro towards paraskov vfk from the north so they are putting this shit on the plate uh but the, the but we have no information about the shit at uh, towards the plate uh because this area here is still a unknown uh thing but we previously do have reports of fighting uh, moving towards Konstantinivka so we will continue to monitor this shit uh, moving towards the plate and we move up to uh, Bodieda there is fighting reported in this region according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry we don't have any information over the battle of Krasnohorivka a lot of news of course fighting is coming is in the southern part of Krasnohorivka so we zoom in so it's easier for you to to, to see so uh, in the most southernmost district Russian forces taken uh the entire district according to the russian sources this is not acknowledged by the ukrainian side so so we look at this area first further up north this is the heavy uh, this is the industrial zone joe location of russian forces uh waving their flag at this area here and the and the footage of them unloading troops at this position shows that the russian forces have clear presence right now in this area here which also v validates this russian claim that most likely the russians have taken all of this area here but we for uh, for conservative conservative reasons we will just put it as this area here as firm russian control with this area continues to be under uh, uh under only russian claim uh ukrainian forces getting bombarded at this position uh shows invalidates uh, this entire area to be under ukrainian control previously it's listed as possible russian control because the russian tank just drove through the entire street so if we zoom out uh so the push is rather significant if we just believe everything that is being reported russian forces have taken the entire southern part push up to the north have a have a strong position in the center and capture the rest of this southern part ukraine forces retake uh retake this area here to try to counter attack and push back the russian forces but so far it looks rather uh rather sad you know rather difficult uh, for the ukrainian forces and if you look from a general uh, overview russian forces is right here right now uh, so this means that the ukrainian forces uh has lost around 20 percent of the of the city when around 20 percent so russian forces can now from this uh, advantageous position push towards towards the center or towards the west they will totally avoid this entire area because this is heavy entrenchment you can see all these yellow lines so these are all trenches so uh so this is a very very uh bad situation for the ukrainian forces and i have no idea when the the aid the military aids is going to arrive at the ukrainian side so uh that in the among the military aids i'm not so tied up about the the equipments like the vehicles the bread least one no i think the more important thing is like anti-tank guided missiles uh service to air missile system like the, the stinger ammunition low uh grenades or whatever i think these are more the more important one the infantry equipments because you need you need this sort of thing for defensive purposes uh armored vehicles of course important but they can get taken out rather quickly infantry is a bit harder so i'm i'm uh tentatively based on my the information that i gotten i think i don't think that uh it, it has arrived at the front line just yet so we are at the at the fk front this is at the fk city that the peanut is very far away um russian forces are attacking over at uh, develsky at the Love, bombarding kalivka uh they destroyed a bridge south of mizove fighting reporter at umanske Ukrainian forces counterattack at Semenivka, Russian attack at Badaichi. They attack south of Novo Bamutivka. Uh, they captured Selovove, Viove. They bombard Sokil, attacking at Ocheritine. Ukrainian forces counterattack at Ocheritine, counterattack at Novo Bamutivka. Russian attacking Karamik. Ukrainian forces counterattack at Karamik. So this is the current uh, strategic situation over at the at DFK front. Um, very 
it's starting to look a bit complex if I draw it this way. But generally, the Russians are actually making this massive push north of this heavy Ukrainian entrenchments. Uh, this is the second line of defense that was built after the fall of Adyevka. The they the Ukrainian forces spent a lot of manpower trying to hold the Russians over at Olivka, Tonenke, uh, and Zhivane. They, they made this heavy fight uh, over around here to delay the Russian forces so that they can build this heavy defense. But they built this heavy defense, now the Russians are just going to go around it. So this is a very uh, problematic situation for the Ukrainians. Russian forces are making, uh, they continue to put pressure on the Ukrainians over in the Umanske all the way to the Nevelske line. Uh, this this is to draw Ukrainian forces uh, attention towards this area here, make them unable to react to the situation at Ocheretine. And the thing is that if you don't react to all this fighting at Umanske and uh, Netelove, Russian forces can also push through from this direction and create a second a second direction hitting Kalevka, which would then mean the, this become a two prone attack and uh, that's also bad you know there is no good options unless Ukraine can search more troops into the Adyevka direction which they already did previously when they're trying to hold this line so I'm not sure how much more they have uh, tentatively the Ukrainian military no there is a lot of this uh, belief that you know, the Ukrainian forces have not enough manpower because they have problem mobilizing. It's not entirely true per se. The they have people, they have a lot of men. They but they are but you just look at the number of trenches all around the place. All these trenches need to be manned with manpower. Every single street there there is you no know, every single village there's a street, there's gonna be checkpoints. You need a lot of manpower and you're not talking about defending the border regions. They need manpower to defend the border region, catching people trying to run away from the country. And uh, of course, logistic jobs, a lot of people need to be doing logistics. So they have men. But thing is, it is the combatants, the, the, the soldiers that are trained to fight, trained to go on to assault, trained to man a trench. I think this is the manpower that they are lacking right now. And uh, so human beings, they have, they, they have problem with having infantry. And uh, so we go into details. Uh, so we have this fighting as i mentioned already the significance of this now we look at this uh burmese dragon or the or thai thai dragon you know there's this horn around here and then and rah, no, okay there's there's a poor drawing anyway yeah so this uh this is becoming a bit of a you no know, significant thing russian forces okay we go from the south russian forces are hitting south of Novo Bermutivka. this is the car exact same situation when the russian forces attack from the south or uh, from the north of Ocheretine towards the south towards Novo Bermutivka. now they are doing the same thing ukrainian forces redrew again and we're going to probably see exactly the same situation repeat again if the russian forces continue to attack south from this area here and then the ukrainian forces uh, holding up in this position at Badaichi is going to face the exact same problem where they are facing two different fronts where the Russian forces are putting pressure at Badaichi suddenly the Russians are hitting you in the rear so I suspect that the Ukraine forces may do a redrawal again uh, in this area here just like they happened over in the south of Nov Novo Bakhmutivka this is this might be happening uh, because the entire uh, retreat route and a reinforcement route, resupply route is now you know, getting flanked. And uh, this is a currently developing situation. Um, as the Russians are now moving in the rear positions, I think the Ukrainian forces in the front is going to panic. Uh, and they're going to reconsider their, you know, their, their, their career choice and uh, maybe they will go for some... Uh, meditation in the in the rear so uh over at the soloviove region according to the russian mapping they have captured uh soloviove according to the mapping by raiba russian forces have taken the entire soloviove as well as a uh, something a part some part of the tree lines in the northeastern part of the village uh there is your location uh of, of uh, the russians raising their flag in the middle of soloviove so this confirms the russian uh at least capturing the center of Solovyove. According to the uh, Russian uh, information, Ukrainian, Ukrainian forces have actually redrawn to Sokyo uh, in this area here. Sokyo, there is a heavy entrenchment around here, so this is good and a major trench line, at least based on the previous, uh, all these uh, pre-mapped trenches. But don't believe all these trenches uh, mapping 100% uh, because there could be new ones. 
uh, there could be new ones. So uh, because these are all dated already, the last time I saw all these things, maybe half a year ago, so or at least one year ago. So uh, these are just you no know, good efforts by you know a lot of these different open source intelligence. You no, know, looking through the satellite satellite imagery and you no know, try to map all this mapping is amazing work. I did some of it before. I can't stand it. <laughs> like you no, know, this one is I is input by myself, so it's gonna be a hard work. Anyway, um, so the one in the south of Novo Bamutivka is reported by the Ukrainians. So this the but so this part is uh, by the Ukrainians, but this direction is by the Russians. So this is a combination of uh, both mapping on both sides. So uh, over at this north of Ocheretine, the latest news according to the Russians is that the Russians have captured the entire northern part and they are now chasing the Ukrainians into Akanhelsky. And the Ukrainian forces have a major entrenchment around here. And of course, there's another one around here, trench lines. And um, of course, the village around at Akanhelsky is unlikely, uh, in my opinion, that the Russian forces is able to hold this position because this is too stretched out. Uh, this, you no, know, this is too stretchy. Um, they are too far ahead from the supply line. So, but it looks cool. Uh, the Russian mapping map it in this way. Uh, so it looks very uh, suggestive, you no know, touching this thing, uh, this round thing around here. But it is, this is what is is mapped. So I report as it is. But uh, for those that are pro Russian, no, I don't expect too much from this one. I don't think Akanhelsky will fall just like this, uh, because there is no way to resupply this, you know, quickly. Uh, you know, you can't go through the center. So we'll continue to monitor, especially if you if you consider Ukrainian forces can counter attack. Uh, Ocheretine and cut off the Russian forces heading to Akanhelsky. So uh, over at the Novo Kalinove region, the, the, there is fighting reporter at Karamik. You can see Karamik mentioned by the Russian Defense Ministry and Ukrainian Defense Ministry mentioned uh, Karamik as well. So both sides mentioned about Karamik. So Russian forces may be attacking uh, uh, Karamik from this direction as, as per I predicted or an analyze that the Russians is going to go around attacking Karami. So this is uh, the, the thing to 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 take note. Did, did I miss DSC Netalove? No, 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 no. Okay, good, good. I'm mapped correctly. So that's all for this uh, DFK front. We move into um, New York front. At the New York front, we have Ukrainian forces trying to distract the Russians at New York as well as on the east northeast of Novo Selivka. This is reported by the Russian Defense Ministry. Both information coming from the Russian Defense Ministry. So they, the Ukrainians are trying to start a new uh, front or something. You no, know, try to draw Russian forces away from the ADF front. However, this is not going to work. Uh, the main reason is because this front line around here is not fought uh, by the... It's not exactly, you know, of. Uh, you no know, co concentrated by this main offensive. This army group's objective is around here. The entire line here, you know, is is not going to be affected. Uh, they have other troops to do this defensive work. But we will continue to monitor. I mean, th if the offensive is not big enough, the Ru they they are not going to draw Russian forces towards this direction. And um, we move on over to the Bakhmut front. In the southern flank of the Bakhmut front, fighting is being reported at Klishevka as well as towards Bilahora, according to the Russian Defense Ministry, they mentioned Bilaya Gora. Um, this could actually be just fire attacks, may not actually be uh, some offensive op uh, operations. We move into the center, uh, central flank. Uh, central flank. Uh, in the central flank, uh, we have fighting reported at Ivaniske. Ukrainian forces are counter-attacking over there. Russian forces attacking towards Chastifia direction. And, uh, and they are also continue to put pressure on Novo. Uh, Novoye or Novi. Uh, there is your location of, I think this is an airstrike. Yeah, this is an airstrike on this uh, high rise building at Novi. So, this is the current situation at Chasifia. Uh, so, according to some information uh, that I have, the Russian, the Russian lines is actually here and they actually have reached the canal. So, this is uh, based on some of uh, my personal information that I get, but I will not map it in because. Uh, Everything needs to be sourced. So, uh, so again, you know, press the like button, subscribe, uh, smash it with a fab. Uh, if you are pro-Ukrainian, smash it with a uh, you no know, attack M missile. You no know, attack M missile, the like button. So the, so the Russian forces likely already reached the canal region, and then they actually hold hold some of this uh, forest in this region here. So this is the this is the information that I gotten, but no source. 
in a way that I cannot source it from a public source, so I will not map it in. So, but just take note. Well, according to the Ukrainian mapping, this entire area is gray zone, so it could be anywhere. Uh, this is this is why some uh like some mappings they like to put gray zone because it just gives them a lot of leeway to deciding where the front line is. So I don't do that. I uh, because it will just complicate the map because we already have two maps: the Russian map and the Ukrainian maps. So. We move on. Uh, so this kind of overlapping is the gray zone uh, in our mapping. Uh, we just work differently because we are unique. We are best. Uh, anyway, we move into the Sivers front. At the Sivers front, we have uh, Russian forces continue their offensive in their Sivers offensive with fighting reported below Horevka, Vakum Okayamske, Sperne, as well as towards Vimka. Joe location at Sperne of Russian airstrike, as well as uh, this is a... Uh, rocket artillery strike over in the area of Fukumokanyamske and again I have to uh, I have to you know highlight how close the airstrike is from the front line the airstrikes are here Russian forces allegedly has taken all this position the airstrike is being struck at less than a kilometer's distance from the front line so uh, and according to certain information that I saw on uh, X uh, it seems like the Russians are now the individual units uh, on the ground. They are they are defending certain front line or doing offensive actions when they call for you no know, support, fire support. Sometimes the fire support didn't come as a form of artillery. Sometimes it comes in the form of an airstrike. So it can be so you no know, Russian. They are the Ukrainian war basically trained the Russian in the NATO style of warfare, which is the close air support kind of thing. Uh, which is such a terrible idea you not know, to train Russia into you know, learning how to fight modern warfare. So I really do not know what the West is doing. Like, why are you strengthening their enemies by you not know, giving them training? By you not know, giving them a Ukraine to fight and train? Like like a sparring partner, you know. You, if you want to crush the Russians, send in the NATO troops, just... No, play the superb game of chicken and see whether Russia will chicken out. If not, then you just fight the war that you say that it's going to come either way. No, don't. They, 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 kept, they kept feeding Ukrainians with such little bit of weapons and, and insufficient support. There's no air force. Like, there's no clear air force right now in the Ukrainian side. There's no attack helicopters. They are asking Ukrainians to train the Russians. This is exactly what we are seeing right now. And I... I really don't like it, you know, the, the it's, it's really dumb. Um, anyway, Russian forces attacking through the Serevyansky forest tree, they are attacking Korsky, they are attacking towards Zarishne, and they are also attacking Kerny. So this is the current situation over at uh, Karmina. So some people told me that I should move the map a bit to see Liman. So this is, so this Liman, or, the, or Krasny Liman, also known as Crispy, Crispy Lemon. So, so uh, Karmina, over here, no crispy lemon over there, no. Yeah. So anyway, this is the current situation over at this front line. There's nothing much else to talk about, other than it's getting a bit uh, hot around here. But we don't have footages coming out from this front line. So maybe the commanders around here is very disciplined. They don't allow footages to go out. Uh, so we do not know what's the extent of the situation around here. Uh, but not north of this place is not the same. Uh, over at the Svetovay front, we have Russian fight, fighting at Berestove, attacking Stemakivka. They're attacking towards this place called uh, Juzelubivka, as well as attacking towards Makievka. At the, at the Makievka, we have a helicopter strike, a uh, uh, missile, guided missile strike being geolocated. So, this is the current situation. Previously, we have Russians attacking uh, in the area of. Uh, 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 what is this? Uh, Sir Dolif Bove, uh, Zer Bove, yeah, and uh, okay, and also at uh, this uh, this area here. Previously, they were attacking through the center, uh, Nadia. So the now they are now pr just probing everywhere. I suspect this might be very suspicious. No, this actually is very suspicious. Not sure if this will develop into something more. Uh, so we will just continue to monitor and see how this uh, develops over at the Svetovay front. And we, over at the Kremina front, uh, sorry, Kupian's front, at the Kupian's front, we only have uh, fighting being reported at Kaislivka, according to the Deep State UA, uh, the pro-Ukrainian source. Uh, at Hlushkivka, uh, there is uh, 
shelling being reported by the Russian Defense Ministry. And that's about it from the Kupians front. And now we move into the border regions. We have nothing being geolocated around here. And that's about it. So this is the situation report or the summary for the day of 792 for the 25th of April. Uh, so do press the like button, subscribe, share. I know uh, this may be, uh, I, if you watch to this point, of course, it's kind of uh, pointless to say, but of course, you no, know, this is very different from the frontline changes report. This is very detailed. We go into details, into all the different frontline. And uh, people complain it's very long. I know it's 25 minutes, but know what you want me to do. Do you want me to censor certain information or cut out information? What information is, is pointless? Like, no, you can't really cut out much. Uh, so, you no, know, it is what it is. I try to do my best. Um, if it's long, then it's long, you know. Um, like, I remember the days I used to do 40 minutes, 45 minutes, 50 minute videos on a daily basis in the first, in the first, you know, first few months of the war. In, f in fact, most of the first half a year of the war. Uh, the videos are all 40, 50 minutes because because there was even more fronts. There was the front, the northern front, we have a khaki front. <laughs> so, uh, which, which is double the length of the front line right now you no know? so of course the videos is twice as long so now it's 25 minutes previously it was 40 minutes because it was twice as long so the video was twice as long so i don't you know there's no way to shorten this but it is what it is the people who complain wouldn't be watching this part so you know <laughs> i'm just ranting thank you for watching i'll see you guys in the next update